This is Andy Purawa for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm delighted to be joined by Amr Abdallah for what is the first time I am interviewing him. Amr, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Good to see you. You too. Um, obviously the reason being that you usually speak to Ryan or Rob, so shout out to both of them. But as I say, I'm here and I have a privilege to speak to you today. Badu Jack, the rematch, he's finally got it. Talk to him about his preparations, Amr. How has he been looking? You know, it's, it's such a cliche to say this is the best training camp that he's ever had and you, know, you hear that all the time, every fighter says that, but this truly is the best training camp Badu Jack has ever had. Uh, the sparring partners, the level of sparring partners that we've brought in, the way Badu is handling them um, is, is phenomenal off the charts, but I think the most important thing to me is where his head is at. Mentally, Badu is in a different zone. Um, this is, you know, at, at 36 years old, about to be 37, this is a must-win fight for him. Um, you know, 70 percent plus of the people that watched the first fight thought he won the fight. We surely thought he won the fight. Um, so this is redemption. This is, you know, this is the fight that needs to happen, and, and he needs to win this fight. And I believe that he will big. Um, I just spoke to Jonathan Banks, and he said to me, the 12th round, that all-action round that I had last time round, is what he expects to see from Badu and from John, uh, John Pascal at the beginning of the fight this time round. Is that what you're expecting as well? 100%. And as we've been talking, you know, this is round 13. So this is where that last fight left off. And if there was a round 13, you know, with all due respect, Pascal wouldn't have made it. He barely got out of the 12th round, didn't know which corner to go back into. Uh, so this fight is going to pick up right where it left off. Jonathan Banks has done a phenomenal job getting Badu to start fast. And, you know, Badu's been heavily criticized about taking his time and, you know, getting started in the later rounds, uh, as he did with Marcus Brown. As in, by that time, it was too late with that cut on his, on his face. Um, and as he has with most of the fights with, uh, you know, DeGale and then this last fight with Pascal, even with Adonis Stevenson. Uh, but you're going to see a different Badu Jack this fight. You're going to see a Badu Jack that comes out the gate strong. Round 13 is going to be round one. I know you mentioned um, he's closing in on 37 years of age now. With that in mind, is there an added pressure for him to be successful in this fight, to pick up a world title once again, and to look at the other, the other elite guys that are a lot heavyweight? Well, look, first of all, talking about his age, Badu is a fresh 37. You know, he hasn't, he, and he's been in some tough fights, but he started boxing a little bit later in his career, so he didn't take the abuse. And, and Badu lives a, a, a truly, you know, an Islamic lifestyle. He doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, you know, his weight doesn't fluctuate too much. It's a very disciplined lifestyle. So he's got a lot of miles left on him. Very sharp, very clean, you know, just, uh, and that, that translates into a lot into boxing. Um, having said that, uh, this is a must-win fight. This is a, a point in his career where, you know, he's, he's, he, and he knows it. So you're going to see the best Badu Jack come June 6th. Have you guys considered at all what could be around the corner for him if he is successful on June 6th? You know, we're, we're going to sit down and we're going to discuss it with the team. And uh, I know where Badu wants to go. And, you know, this would be, I mean, rightfully so, his sixth world title. If all those controversial decisions, and I say controversial, what I really mean is he got robbed in the fights. Um, his sixth world title. From there, you know, he has ambitions to move up to cruiserweight. He may want to stay at light heavyweight, but I think he would love to be, you know, a three division world champion. He's a big guy at light heavyweight, uh, I'm a, is it easy for him to make weight? I'll tell you what, when I first started working with Badu in 2017, I couldn't believe that he made 168. You know, when he fought James DeGale, um, I couldn't believe that he could make that weight. But yeah, it, it's 175, and we have the best nutrition team in the world, Lockhart and Leaf we bring on. Uh, we've got James Lockwood in camp now with us. Uh, so the weight management, him making weight is not a problem because Badu's a disciplined guy. Does he like making the weight? That's a different question. That's a different scenario. But uh, I, I think, you know, like we, when we fought in November, in November on the Mike Tyson, Roy Jones card, we did a catch weight. Uh, I think it was 190 pounds. He was very comfortable there. It was, he had a fun time. He was, a, he was one of the funnest training camps we've had. Mind you, the opposition wasn't elite, but he had a fun time in camp because it wasn't always about weight, 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 weight. So as the older he gets, you know, the more he starts realizing that, you know, maybe going up to in weight and cruiserweight might be the ideal option for him. I mean, we know Vidal Riley is attempting to get over here. Have you got any update for us as to where things currently stand? Look, Vidal Riley is itching to fight again. He has had, you know, the worst luck in, in terms of his fight. He had a huge stage to fight on, uh, the Mike Tyson, Roy Jones card. He had a, a, a bad injury and he tried to fight through it. And I told him, Vidal, there's no way I'm going to put you on this stage. I mean, if you can't give me at least 90%, there's no way I would put you on there. Um, but, you know, he, he wanted to fight. Uh, so we're into this fight now. Right now, what we're working on in Vidal is in training camp. He's training with his father, Derek, over in the UK in London. 
Uh, what they're doing now is we're trying, we're working on the uh, the immigration and uh, making sure there's no any any problems of him getting over with COVID and whatnot. But uh, you know, we have a slot for Vidal on this card. Just a matter of making sure that the logistics work out before we announce it. For those of you who obviously follow the sport closely, they know how talented Vidal is, and I know you guys speak very highly of him as well as a fighter. He hasn't had the most active of runs, shall we say, at the beginning of his career. Is that something you guys are desperate to kind of work on and fix? I know it's hard because of COVID and travel restrictions and what have you, but is that going to be key for him moving forward? Oh, it absolutely will. And Vidal's itching. You know, in between, and I know that he gets the criticism of being a social media guy into boxing. No, he's a boxer that dabbled into social media. There's a big difference between the two. Uh, you know, uh, uh, decorated uh, on a great British team as an amateur, decorated, you know, amateur champion. Uh, turning pro, his ambition is to be a world champion. He knows he's got to be active. We know he's got to be active. But, you know, just, again, the fate, and I use bad luck, and whether it's fate or whatever it may be, just karma, you know, just the way that it's supposed to be. Injuries, delays, COVID, you know, it all translates to where we are today. But rest assured, once this fight, once this fight gets, you know, once COVID goes and we can start moving, Vidal's going to be very active. And obviously a headline fight on June 6th. Just get your thoughts on Floyd Mayweather in his gym today. You know him. What are your thoughts on his battle with Logan Paul? I look at Floyd, it, 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 it angers me sometimes and it disappoints me sometimes when I see how much slack he's getting from the media about why are you fighting Logan, you know, go fight one of these. Why? Floyd, during his career, at his time, fought 50 professional fights and he beat 50 people, 18 of them world champions. The man deserves a payday. The man is the pay-per-view king during his heyday, De La Hoya, Mosley. Uh, uh, you know, name Pacquiao. You know, name the guys that, that Floyd has beaten. Cotto. You go on and on and on. So he doesn't deserve now after in his retirement. You want him now at 44 years old, 45 years old, start fighting 22 year old killers? Why? He already did that during his career. Let the man enjoy his retirement. Let him make his money. One of really your thoughts on he certainly started to. He went viral. Was the little clip of Jake Paul and himself at altercation? What did you make of that? I'll tell you, and, and I had conversations, you know, with, with, with some promoters. These guys are content creators. They know what clickbait is. They know how to get views. They know how to attract the media. Look, Jake Paul is making more than 90% of combat sports athletes in the world. Good for him. So a lot of guys, again, you know, they hate on it and they say, you know, it's not fair. That, and I have a lot of fighters that have legitimate injuries, concussions, you know, brain damage that they suffer. Uh, real injuries that don't make the money that he does. But here's what you've got to understand. He did put in his time. It was just in social media. And he built that following. So now he's transitioning it over to boxing. I, you know, I don't hate it. I love it. I think it's great. Uh, you know, for him, what he did, I think that that really helped sell the fight. I really do. The final thing, I know that was going to be, but just spoke to Vitor Belfort. He's looking to move into boxing. Just update me on how he's kind of looking to get into the sport. So, you know, uh, Vitor reached out um, a little while ago and, and he had ambitions. Uh, you know, and I don't follow MMA much, so of course I heard the name Vitor Belfort, you know, in the heyday of the UFC and MMA. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, we started talking. And the more research I did on the guy, I started realizing how good he was. So we put him through a workout. He did, you know, a light sparring session, a couple of training sessions. And the guy's the real deal. He can still crack, he can still punch, he can still move. He, I mean, he's the real deal. And uh, when he decides to jump into boxing, which I think that's going to be the decision that he makes, uh, when he decides to go in there, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And I think it's going to be a huge platform uh, that he'll be fighting on. And uh, we've already got some names lined up, so I'm, I'm happy to be a part of the team. I mean, I appreciate your time today. I'm leaving now to get back to Badu and look after him. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.